Hao mitake api! Welcome everyone! And welcome to the Lakota Language Mini Lesson 12. And let's go ahead and continue our dialogue that we're doing in all these previous lessons. And first of all, I will go through each word with you. I will say the word and then define it. And I will say it again, then repeat it after me. Okay, so here we go. Look at the first line. We'll go sentence by sentence, and you see the English, so you know what we're talking about on the screen. Wonk air. This is a man's word, generally speaking. Most of the time, men say this, and the, the definition is like, Ah, you're crazy. Ah, that's ridiculous. Like, if you do something really outrageous, it could be funny. <laughs> and most of the times it's funny. Or if somebody teases somebody, then that that person who's being teased will say, Wonk, eh. Sometimes you hear it without the K. Sometimes you hear people say, Wonk, eh like that. Either way is good, but for this dialogue we're going to say it with the K. So, Min, repeat after me. Wonk air. One more time. Wonk air. So you're putting a little space between the K and the E. You say the K sound, but you cut it off really short. Yeah? Wonk air. It's almost like a clicking sound, yeah? Like that. <laughs> you just barely hear it. Wonk air. Yeah. So again, that's for men. And this is what they say when they're reacting to something, like a teasing, or somebody does something funny, or says something funny. They can say that. Wonk air. Yeah. yeah? Okay. For women, it's etjesh duale. Sometimes women will just say ejesh, and sometimes they'll just say duale. Yeah, but really it should be said together because it really describes the same thing as wonk air. Yeah, where you have men saying wonk air, women will be saying in the same situation. Women will say ejesh duale. Like that, you really put some emotion into it. Etjesh duale, yeah. Etjesh duale, and I know this word really good because a lot of women have said this to me. <laughs> See, rugged guy, <laughs> trying to be smooth and cool, and then then I hear. Ejesh or duale. <laughs> Ejesh duale. <laughs> oh, shucks. Okay, so all women repeat after me. Ejesh duale. One more time. Ejesh duale. Very good. Next word, ojuyute. This is a vegetarian. Repeat after me, everyone. Ojuyute. One more time. Ojuyute. Very good. Next word, henicha. This means you are. Okay, repeat after me, please, everyone. Henicha. One more time. Henicha. Very good. And the ho and he, we've discussed this in so many sessions. You should know what it is already. Okay? This is the vocal question mark. When men are speaking formally or in serious situations or so, They'll say ho when they ask their questions, but when men are speaking in a friendly situation among friends and family, or they're extending 
fellowship to a new person, they will say he at the end of the question. And all women say he at the end. Okay? So that's how that works. So if you have somebody that says all men must say ho and all women must say he and you're dividing the genders up into just two and that's dogmatic. That comes from you know that everything has to be this one way and the Lakota way is not like that but churches are that way and today a lot of native Lakota people are either Christian or Christian influence so they think like that and that's not the Lakota way of thinking the Lakota way of thinking is more open it's more accepting there's always going to be at least three ways to look at something okay but in the dogmatic Christian dualistic Western world of thinking there's always it's got to be this way and if it's not then it's wrong yeah we're not that way our ancestors are not that way and I'm teaching you from the ancestral Lakota perspective and in Lakota star knowledge spirituality it teaches there are seven genders because it begins in the mind yeah it doesn't begin with the physical body it begins in the mind as the first Lakota star knowledge concept is reality begins within and then everything else builds on top of that so okay now let's go to the second sentence hia means no we've had this word before everyone repeat after me hia one more time say it the same way i say it hia oh, very good we're learning the music of the language too that's why I it's important to try to say it the way I do. Okay? Very good. Hemacha. This means I am. So everyone repeat after me. Hemacha. One more time. Hemacha. Very good. Shni means not. So everyone repeat after me. Shni. Again. Shni very good and many times when you have a sentence that ends with shni you have hia at the beginning of that sentence like in this short one hia hemacha shni <laughs> no i am not <laughs> you can see on the dialogue you can see the english translation it's it's a nice nice little discussion okay let's keep going here ash means but not the physical butt, but <laughs> not the physical butt, but <laughs> not the physical butt, but you know the other butt, <laughs> that butt. <laughs> Don't know how to explain it. Okay, just repeat after me, please. Ash. One more time. Ash. Very good. And again, always try to say it the way I do. Okay, I'm teaching you the music of the language too. Next word, ungna. It can mean maybe or perhaps or it might. Sometimes you hear this as a longer word, but for this sentence we're going to say the short version, the abbreviated version, ungna. Repeat after me please. Ungna. Okay, it's not ungna. Okay, some of you are saying ungana. No, there is no letter between the G and the N, the second N. It's ungna. Okay, one more time. Everyone, repeat after me, please. Ungna. Very good. You say it fast, yeah? Ungna. Very good. Okay, next word, he. This he means that or it. It's talking about something, that, or it, or he, or she. You see what I mean? So everyone repeat after me. He. Again, he. Very good. Next word, o yul wash de. This is, it tastes good, or it's delicious, it's tasty. Everybody repeat after me, please. O yul wash de. 
Notice where I put the accent on the second syllable. Again, please. O yulbashte. Very good. And the future tense word, kde. Repeat after me, please. Kde. It's not kte. It's not kte. <laughs> it's kde. It's like you're just taking the click sound of the K and you're saying a hard T sound. Yeah, not kte, but kte. Not kte, but kte. It's almost like a D, but not quite. Almost like a D, but not quite. That T with a line over it. It sounds close to a D, but not quite. Kte. Like that. Okay, that turns any word or sentence into future tense. You put it at the end. Okay, you see that at the end of the next sentence. In Lakota culture, humor is really an important part. And you, you can sense that in this dialogue. And also, when something is new, or when we encounter something new, we give it a chance because you never know. Yeah, it could be a good thing, or maybe it's not, but how will you know unless you you test it out? Yeah, if you have absolutely no clue what it's going to be like, you give it a chance, or you take the time to check it out, and this sentence is saying that, yeah? But it might taste good, it might taste delicious. <laughs> <laughs> and then the guy answers, yeah, could be, maybe. <laughs> okay, I'll try it. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? And so this is an example of our culture, of how we take the time to check things out if we have absolutely no clue what it's about. If we do have an idea of what it is, then yeah, you can... You can say, okay, I'm going to stay away from that, or okay, I'll do that, or whatever. But when you're running into something that you have absolutely no clue, absolutely no clue, you don't even get a vibe, yeah, then you you take some time to check it out because you never know, it could be a good thing. Yeah, sometimes vegetarian food is incredibly delicious. Really, I've gone to a vegetarian restaurant here in Europe, and... I was like, I don't know about this, but my friend was saying, hey, you know, I eat meat too, but this food is good. It tastes good. Let's just try it out. So I said, okay. So I ordered something. I think it was a pumpkin something, something soup or whatever. And I was like, wow, this is really good. There's absolutely no meat in it. Yeah. And then we got the main dish and and I was like, it was a lasagna or something, and I told you that was one of the best lasagnas I ever have eaten in my life. And there was absolutely no meat in it. Yeah, totally vegetarian. So I gave it a chance, yeah, and it, I was I was blown away. So I love that. <laughs> okay, so you take the time to check it out. That's part of thinking Lakota. Okay, and you need to think Lakota when you speak Lakota. All right, just keep that in mind. So let's continue along with the next sentence. How and huh, we already know this. This means yes, or it could be um, a greeting, or it could be a way to agree with something or affirm it. Yeah, so min, repeat after me, how. Very good. Women, repeat after me. Huh. Very, very good. And here's the word ungana again. Let's say that one more time. Ungana. Ungana. Very good. And hechetu is like, yes, that's the way it is. That's the truth. So let's say this word. Hechetu. One more time, please. Hechetu. Very good. And one more time with the future tense word. Kde. Repeat after me, please. Kde. Very good. And now we go to the last sentence and we see that future tense word again at the end. Repeat after me, please. We already know this word. 
he one more time he very good the next word iblutin this means i will try it i will taste it to taste and to try have the same word in lakota that word is iblutre or iblutra depending on how you're using it but when you're doing future tense the last vowel which is either a or e turns into this i n that you see on the screen iblutre notice the guttural on the t iblutre so try to say this word with me I'll say it slow. E blue team. One more time. E blue team. And then the future tense word. Kde. One more time. Kde. Now let's say those two words together. Okay? Because they really go together. Say it like one word. Repeat after me, please. E blue team kde. One more time. E blue trink there. Very good. Okay, now let's go through every sentence. I will say it and then repeat after me. Remember, if you're a man, say wonk air. If you're a woman, say a jest wale. Okay? And for how and ha. Huh. If you're a man, say how. If you're a woman, say ha. Huh. Okay? So. Repeat after me, but choose your word when you have a choice. Okay? Here we go. Wonk air. Oju you dehani cha he. Very good. Let's say it one more time. Wonk air. Oju you dehani cha he. Very good. Okay, second sentence. Hia hemachashni. Ash ungana he oyul wash dek de. Repeat after me, please. Very good. One more time. Hia hemachashni. Ash ungana he oyul wash dek de. Very good. Okay, now let's go to the third line. Remember, if you're a man, you say how. If you're a woman, you say how. Okay? Repeat after me, please. How? Ungana heche dukte. One more time. How? Ungana heche dukte. Very good. Okay, now the last line. He i blue trink de. Repeat after me, please. Very good. One more time. He i blue trink de. Very, very good. Now let us dialogue. I will say the first sentence and then you answer me and then we go back and forth like that okay as we've done in all previous mini lessons all right so i'll start it and then you continue it okay here we go wonk air oju you te heni cha he how ungana heche duk te Very good. Very, very good. Now let's switch the parts. You say the first sentence and I will say the second and so on. We'll just continue one after the other. Okay, so go ahead and say the first sentence now. Hia hemachashni. Ash ungana hel o you de. He i blue trink de. Very good. Very good. How about that? Now we're really talking here. 
We're dialoguing back and forth. Pat yourself on the back. If you can. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I have a back scratcher, so I use that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> anyway, practice this as much as you can and just keep going with this. You are speaking Lakota. Congratulate yourself. Celebrate. Do something good. Eat something good. You are learning Lakota and you're learning it from me on YouTube. <laughs> so anyway, we will continue with this dialogue. The next time we'll keep developing it. There are things you can use in other discussions too. Yeah, like this wonk air or a gesture for women. Yeah. Or hechetu, or huh hechetu. Yeah, that's the way it is. So there's things in here that you can use in other situations too. Common sentences, okay? So practice, 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 and keep going. I applaud you. If you made it from lesson one and you're on lesson 12, wow, you're doing really good. Just practice as much as you can. And we will continue this next time in the next mini lesson. Aomitake api doksha ake. To learn more about speaking the Lakota language, you can read my book called Chante et Anho Ooglake, Speaking from the Heart. You can see the book cover on the right side of this screen. This book contains the information to what I talk about on my Lakota language mini lesson videos. To purchase this book, please click below where it says Show More. Clicking that link will open up the description below, and there you will see a link called To Purchase My Books. As you will see, it's an eBay link. Click on that eBay link. And there you will see the information to get this book. Lila Pilamayelo. Thank you very much.